than what we're doing. So, so what I do want to, I want to introduce the gentleman. It's going to really break down what our business is about. Not just break down our business, just break down a mindset of how our year and months and days should go. You know, just really break down on how to make this an effective day, how to make your time as you build your business one that works with how everybody's busy schedule works. So I know this gentleman knows 100% of what it takes to be successful because he already created success in this industry. He loves having a fun position to help a lot of people make money. And more importantly, more importantly, he's definitely looking to help as many people create success they want to do it for themselves. So would you guys do me a favor? Just come to them, come off mute, raise your voice, wake up a cat or something, do something. And let my big brother, Richard Hart, know that you appreciate his time. Thank you all so much, sir. My big brother. Executive director. Let's go. I'm all, all right, guys. Mr. Richard Hart. All right, Mr. Hart. All right, all right, all right. Yes, the Hulk. I see, I see your faces. You're like, oh, wait, wait a minute. What does this have to do with our training program? By the way, for those of you that don't know, it's um, Cupid's new song. It's Cookout. Y'all heard the Cookout song yet? Haven't heard the Cookout song yet. No. Oh, well, let me get y'all out. Let me get y'all out and about. I'll teach y'all this next time we're in person. But Labor Day had me um, reflective today, meaning everybody around the country, you know it's Labor Day, right? Yep. Ask yourself, why is it mm -hmm. Labor Day? You're celebrating why, working. Why does labor even get a day? Why do we have a holiday, a day off work <laughs> to celebrate that we've been working all year? And it's one of the, the peculiar things about our American system, our economic system and money in America that reminds me of the importance of what we're doing. So if you'll bear with me for about 20 minutes, I want to I want to bring y'all up to speed on what I call the cash flow cookout. Because how many of you got invited to a cookout earlier today, have been to a cookout, gotten some sun and some some food and some tasty beverages and are on the way to something else later? I did. Yep, yep, yep. Going somewhere in a minute. Yeah, me too. But well, our uncle taught us something way back then, and this is when you realize that you've grown into the person. As Unc, Unc said, if you you give people a holiday, they'll forget what the fight was about. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to the cookout, as you envision the things that people tell you, well, bring this or take that or, uh, you know, forgetting that today is Monday altogether. Let's, let's get into this conversation about the cash flow cookout. And I won't take a long time. So for those of you that are celebrating, I celebrate all holidays because I love having a good time. I love eating. I love dancing. I love the process the, of enjoying that I'm alive. But if you look at the history of Labor Day or any of the big holidays, like if you, if you go down your calendar, we know that there's a holiday every month in our economic system, yes? Starting at the beginning of the year, taking it right yeah. on through Labor Day fills in September, just on the back end of back to school. Kids just went back to school last month, but you got Labor Day this weekend, Halloween's coming up, then Thanksgiving, then Christmas. We know these things, but I think we forget to tell people these things. Right. And when it comes to Labor Day in particular, it's actually the back end result of a major revolution in America. Now I know if we think about 4th of July that we celebrate on July 4th, that's on the back end of this period from April 1775 to 1783. Do you remember what revolution that was? Civil War. That's the, well, the American Revolution was first and then 1861 to 1865, you had the War of Emancipation, you had the Civil War, but do you know what happened right on the back end of the Civil War? Put this in your notes and write it down because it's the ongoing revolution that we're in right now. It's the industrial revolution, meaning that at the end of slavery, with the rise of all of the industrialists, your Carnegie's, your Mellon's, your Rockefeller's, all the people that we talk about that are synonymous with wealth today, it was a change in the way that money was made. See, up until 1865, everybody was a farmer of some sort or served a farm. The food that they ate, they grew, or traded with someone nearby that had a farm of a similar kind. Does that make sense? 
But with the mm -hmm. Industrial Revolution, two major things changed about how money works in America. Now we were on a token economy where people had to go to work every day in these factories. And the two major things that came out of the Industrial Revolution were first, organized labor marching for fair wages because people weren't able to make enough money to live in comparison to what money they had when they were on the farm. Am I making sense to you? Okay. Uh, when all yeah. your food is growing yep. on your land, when you're getting your water out of a well, you don't need a water bill. <laughs> you don't need a grocery store. But now yeah, you got people oh. packed into these slums trying to make enough money to live. But capitalists controlled all of it. And everybody had to go to work. When kids used to go to work on the farm, eh, there were different things you had to learn by watching people do. But our American mm -hmm. education system also came from the Industrial Revolution, meaning child labor law said you can't put these babies in here on this equipment and machinery. We have to teach people different things to work as cogs in our machine. Let me pause and say that. We have to teach people different things to work mm. as cogs in our machine. They got to learn to get up at a certain time, to get hungry at a certain time, and when mm -hmm. to go back to work at the end of that time so that the machine stays going. And we need to give ourselves a constant flow of new employees into our machine. Now, the thing about the Industrial Revolution, do you know that it's still going like right now? Like I talk about it like it's ancient times. But the thing about industry is it reinvents itself so that we started off with steam power in the 1700s then electricity in the 1800s, then computing in the 70s and 80s. And today, right now, today, you understand that we're in the middle of an intelligence revolution where even this meeting that I'm on right now. There's an artificial intelligence engine looking at the words that I'm saying and the reactions that I'm getting that'll summarize the meeting and the intent after I'm done. Uh -huh. It's a revolution and it's ongoing. And the thing that we got to remember is we're still fighting the same foe. Meaning as you and me, if we think about the freedom fighting process, because I, I, you know, when I signed up for this business, I signed up to fight for my freedom, not just my freedom, but for all of our freedom, financial freedom. Uh -huh. But with the, with the freedom of finances, we also get ourselves free to take on larger causes. And every war that's ever been fought, if you, if you look through history, it's a process to it. Meaning there's a group of people that look around at the way things are that say, I'm mad as hell, I'm not willing to live like this anymore. Yes? So they yes. make a declaration. They make a declaration of independence. They make a proclamation of emancipation. But whatever they do, they declare that they're not doing this anymore. They build an army and fight until they win. And that's what changes the world. So I wanna expand our vision because I look across the people that are on this particular Zoom, we know some things that the people at events that we're going to do not know about our country, our money, and the way that we can live better than we're living today. Not just have one day off. What if we had days that were seven days of Saturdays and our children got accustomed to the idea of us not going to work for money, but having money go to work for us and be a baby. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? That's yep, yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I forget, I get confused by the things that we're doing. But if you think about what Chuck talked about with inflation and taxes, silent income killer, and the Chainsaw Massacre, this is where our fight is today. It's modernized, it's updated, it's systematic to where people aren't even aware that they're losing, they're bleeding, hemorrhaging money on a every paycheck for paycheck basis. And this debt curse that is piling up to where our children owe hundreds of thousand dollars at birth and big business is still saying, can you give me more? And oh, by the way, if y'all are looking for something that'll really open your eyes to this fight, there is a special on Netflix called The Wealth Gap in America. I'm not one that usually says go watch TV, but go watch The Wealth Gap in America because the disproportionate gap, why all of the political coverage and all the elections and the tax laws matter so much is we are slowly being pressed out of existence as a middle working class, meaning it. We're very quickly going to a place where you got it or you don't. And the difference between got it and don't got it is the way that you apply strategy. Meaning in the wealth gap, here's something I learned that I don't think I knew before. But, you know, we were bought into this country as labor, like the war for labor. The war for labor and emancipation was about currency, meaning, do you know that in the United States, 
especially down here in the South, human capital was what they traded on. Dollars were equated to slaves and mortgages were based on human lives. They're, like the land wasn't worth what it is now. It was the amount of people that were associated to the land. A mortgage was written to a slave owner based on the number of slaves he had. Now, I say I put that in perspective just to let you know that no system that is profitable gives up its power easily. It just converts the way that it gets access to it. How did how did that process work? Well, in America, the what's true is true is not how much money you make is how you make your money. Yes. And we see here's what happened. We learn these things passively, but we forgot to teach them to other people. Meaning, if you think about our tax strategy and tax structure in America, the key, the solution that we have with MWR is relatively brilliant and miraculous because it allows us to help people experience that shift in income that is necessary. Put that in your notes. It's not just it's a good idea. It's necessary if we're ever going to be wealthy. The first thing we got to do is increase the cash flow that comes from the things that we do. Our membership does that but we forget to teach people. Does that make sense? Then the second thing we have to do to protect our income, everybody say protect your check. Protect your check. To protect check our check, check, we need to build a business income and the structures and shelters that the business income provides so that we have enough money left to have investment income. Listen, put this in your notes, money making money, money making money with leverage, is the only way that wealth is being created in this current economic system. Meaning you can't outwork taxes. Did you know it? Because here, here's the thing. Here's the flaw in, in our teaching, right? What do they tell us? They say, make more money, make more money, make more money, right? The flaw in that strategy of make more money, make more money, and I found this out the hard way, is the more money you make, the more they take. This is the 2024 tax bracket, y'all. I want y'all to see what these percentages look like. I know we talk about how much do people pay on, on, in average on inset, income tax, 28 to 33%, right? But what about when you had that breakthrough year and you go over $240,000 and now they want 35% of it? Do you know that most people that make, like here, here's, here's something I learned hanging out with NFL and NBA players, most of them, add a foundation and multiple home businesses to offset this 37% tax bracket so they can get back down here with people that are only making 200,000 a year. Did you hear me? I mean, think about this. If you make a million dollars and you tax 37%, you know you pay $370,000 in taxes? Ridiculous. It's crazy. I and mean, here's the thing, it's not just the amount. It's not a percentage in dollars. The more you make, the more they take, but it's how they take it. They take it up front, meaning that W-2, 28 to 37%, I work, I'm taxed, I get to spend what's left, is a bad philosophy for anybody that wants to make wealth. At the same time, that 1099, the, the, the business, the MWR business membership as a solution offers us, the business earns, the business gets to spend money and gets taxed on what's left. So for the average working person, the best investment we can ever add to our portfolio is a profitable home-based business. Why? Now we get to take things into our lifestyle off the top and reduce what's left to be taxed on the bottom so that we have money to put the work in capital gains. So I want you to get this analogy. Capital gains is where the rich get richer because they're taxed less than half, just if the percentages were all we were working with, 15%, but the money works, the money gets reinvested, and the money gets to make more money. Put that in perspective. Like, if I just think about the faces I see on the screen, say for the sake of this conversation, I just have my good paying job. Tanisha has her good paying job and a business. And Pia, she don't have a job or a business. She's retired. She just has her money making money. Do you know that if all of us go out and do the things that we do to generate income, our treatment is what will make us fall further ahead or further behind? Meaning I make $100,000 in my job. Tanisha makes $100,000 in business. Pia makes $100,000 in her investment account. What happens to me? The minute I make a dollar, 
my employer sends a third of it to the government in the form of taxes, yes? So instead of that $100,000 that I made working, I only bring home $66,000. Now here's a, here's a kick on that $66,000. Every dollar of that 66,000 that I have, when I spend it on anything, I get taxed on that same after tax money. Now with Tanisha's business, Say she has a job and a business and somewhere between the two, she makes a hundred thousand, but the business puts her in place where she can write off thirty, forty thousand dollars, dropping her to a different tax bracket on the same lifestyle that she was living with the possibility of unlimited income with leverage for labor she did not perform. But am I making sense? Like it's so powerful that sometimes we forget that what we got is not just good, it's amazing. Right. Cause so now instead of sixty six thousand, Tanisha has eighty five thousand of the hundred thousand remaining, possibly more. But now here's the kicker. Here's where money making money makes the biggest difference in the world. It doesn't matter how much money Pia's money makes that hundred thousand dollars. It doesn't get taxed until it gets touched. So in a private reserve account, you could make 18, 20% in a year. You mess around and now you've got $120,000 that went untaxed until you touch it in the PRA. You don't have to touch it. You can just borrow it from yourself. Oh, because you're the bank. <laughs> I didn't take it out. I didn't cancel. I just took out a loan for the time being. I'm paid back in a method that's suitable to my financial purposes. Mm -hmm. especially if I do it through the foundation. Does that... mm -hmm. Yeah. Do y'all remember that these, these are the things that we have? So here, here's what I want people to think about when it comes to sharing what we do. It's not just a matter of whether people want to sign up for things or have what they, what we do It's just understanding that this is the lowest cost way to get out of the trap that most of us are in. Meaning it's the cost to start up is so low, $149 to $300 to get started. You got low overhead because the building that you're building, the business is, is right over our heads already. This lowers our taxes just by being in existence, especially if we use the Hurdler app that Mr. Harden talked about during the presentation to document everything that we do. Because if you don't document effectively, if you don't have effective files and systems, your butt cheeks are grass. And then to have a high income without a high output of labor hours. Does that make sense? I would go through the example. Matter of fact, let me run this example just so that you see it visually. Think about these things that are going to be in your lives, whether you start the MWR business with us or not. Um, we call this a number one asset strategy just in, in this way. You're going to pay a mortgage anyway. Does anybody on the line have a mortgage this morning, $1,000? So if you so the mortgage is going to be more than $1000 anyway but if you have a business now 20% of that home could be written off as tax deduction that gives you $200 $2400 a year in deductions for a bill you're going to pay anyway does that make sense Same thing with utilities anybody got a utility bill that's more than $500 a month So conservatively that 20% that's 100 that's another $1200 we get to write off anybody cell phone bill greater than $100 Another thousand that you get to write off. Now, what, what's, a, what's a message here? Those are bills we're going to pay anyway. Has anybody driven more than 10,000 miles this year? Yep. Anybody spend more than $200 a month on meals and entertainment? Oh, by the way, I have to update this. I think we still get 100% on business meals, right? But just say for the sake of the example, you only get half of them, 1,200. And then internet, does your internet cost more than $50 to run? Well, you can write off all your internet, whatever your internet bill is. You plug that in there. And that's the total in deductions with the 12,000 miles, the $12,000 a year you get to write off because you have a business. Put this in your notes. If you don't have a home-based business, these and the other 465 deductions that we talk about, because we're only talking about a couple of ones that everybody has, right? You don't get to write that off if you don't have a home business, Right? Your state and federal taxes is $3,600. And let's say for the sake of this example, you don't have just a huge business where you're making uh, $6,000 a month like a regional direct, like a regional like Chuck Harden would make. You're just making $200 a month. That's $2,400 in business income. 
right? You put that together with the deductions. Do you know that that's $6,000 in tax benefit to you by moving? This is shifting the income gradually. I want y'all to see this. This is gradual. This is, you're not writing home about the $200 you make in business. But if you got $6,000 extra, do you know that you would have to have $600,000 in a bank to earn $6,000 extra? Even if you got into a diversified cash flow account, you need $200,000 at that 3 to 4% range or $100,000 sitting somewhere else. But we took that $249 and got you $6,000 a month. See, people always get this part screwed up in their brains. They think that investing is superior to building a business. Put this in your notes. Investment is just an investment in a business. If you buy $249 of Microsoft stock, that's a $249 investment in Microsoft's business. By the way, that's one half of a share. <laughs> you can buy a half a share of Microsoft for $249. <laughs> but if you take that $249 and your sweat, your text equity, meaning you share what we do with enough people we start to declare war against mediocrity of lack of letting ourselves be in a place where we have less than enough just by sharing our team of financial experts who go to work. Guess what they work on? Attacking the enemies that were taking the money from us. So between this tax reduction, debt elimination, restoring credits, getting bills down low, now you get the leverage of a team of people who get paid and get joy from helping us win our fight and win our battle and make wealth real. So with that said, I, here, here's what I want us to do. Never forget that we're in a continual learning process about money and the money game. And if you think about the strategies that you'll get from a Dave Ramsey in the Total Money Makeover or um, Robert Kiyosaki and Rich Dad, Poor Dad, this is the business where we get to implement them and play the cash flow game to win in real life so that we can develop that millionaire mind and be the millionaire next door. Hopefully this as a Labor Day topic was something different from you, but put it in perspective. Labor is the highest tax form of income in the world. We're all trained to get it because the government profits from it. If we ever want to escape the mortgage trap, if we ever want to get ourselves out of a place where our legacy is no longer lack thereof, we can't keep doing the same things and going to the cookout just because we got a day off. We got a day on and let's march on. Let's win. Let's win. Let's win together. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Happy Labor Day, y'all. Yes. Happy Labor Day. <laughs> Happy Labor Day. Go ahead. Go ahead.